In 2022, Ghana's former Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Honorable Esla Osu Ekufo, challenged African fintech companies to develop a homegrown international online payment system. The goal was to break free from our reliance on global brands like Master, Visa, and other American payment providers. Because the entire continent is going digital. And that is a new area where you can put your money. I've said several times that I don't see why in those of us on the continent still have to use Visa and American Express credit cards for our transactions and pay the user fees for every transaction that we use those cards for. Why can't we also develop our own local payment solution for the continent? which will enable all these huge transaction fees to stay on the continent. 2% per transaction, that's steep. Some charge up to 3, 3.5% per transaction. So just imagine the number of times you use your credit card in or outside the continent and where all those monies are going to. And if we can't, using our own local tech industries and fintechs, develop our own payment solutions, which will enable all these monies to stay on the continent and to be used for the development of our continent. I would love for us to expand the assembling and manufacturing and supply of computers, mobile phones and other accessories locally and it is doable. So if you have partners who are in that sector, please come. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no one will build our country for us than ourselves. Today, we have a Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, PAPS, a fast, secure platform that lets users send and receive money across Africa. PAPS is changing the game, reducing the need for traditional cards like Visa and MasterCard. There is a push by some African nations to shift away from using the US dollar for intracontinental trade. How will PAPS help in this regard? First of all, we've removed that whole sourcing for dollars and so on from economic actors okay so they just need to be able to do their trade yeah in their local currencies now we've connected the central banks of each country as settlement agents on our network so when they do trade then ultimately between the central banks we are able to settle on a multilateral net basis what that means is that if today you are doing maybe X amount of money in one direction and you are doing uh, Y amount of transaction in the opposite direction, only the net position is what changes hands between the countries. And that makes a significant difference because suddenly the amount of money that they will require to settle those transactions is significantly lowered. And again, Ghana is taking it a step further by introducing a single card, the Ghana ID card. That does it all, allowing you to vote, assess healthcare, and even withdraw cash from ATMs. This is the future Ghana is building, but how will it work and what does it mean for everyday people? Let's break it down. First, what is the Ghana card? This card was introduced in 2017. The Ghana card is a national ID issued to every citizen. It securely stores your biometric data like fingerprints and ties it to a unique number. Think of it as your special security card, driver's license and health ID all in one. With over 17 million Ghanaians already using it. The plan now is to expand its capabilities by turning it into an ATM card. This isn't just about convenience for millions, especially in rural areas where bank branches and ATMs are scarce. Having your ID double as your bank card could be revolutionary. The African Center for Digital Transformation, ACDT, is calling for a collaboration between the National ID Authority, the Bank of Ghana, and local banks. Their vision is to let you link your Ghana card to your bank account so that a simple swap at an ATM combined with a PIN entry lets you withdraw cash. No extra card needed. So, how do we get there? The ACDT has outlined five key steps. 
So let's start with linking your Ghana card to your bank account. Today, banks operate on different systems. So the solution is to upgrade technology so that every bank can securely connect with the national ID database. This integration means banks must align their system with the National ID Authority. With a proper upgrade, you could walk into any bank, present your Ghana card and have your account linked instantly. Upness is security. If your card becomes your ATM card, how do we prevent fraud? The answer lies in dual layer protection, biometrics and pins. Imagine an ATM that not only requires your PIN but also verifies your fingerprint. Since the Ghana card already holds your biometric data, adding a PIN means that even if someone steals your card, they won't be able to assess your money without both your fingerprint and your PIN. But there is a catch. Ghana's current ATMs and POS systems need an upgrade. Many machines still lack biometric scanning capabilities, so banks and retailers will have to invest in new technology. While this is a big tax, it's essential for the system to work. To facilitate these upgrades, the government might offer incentives or banks could share the cost. Either way, modernizing the hardware is a non-negotiable step. After that, we will need new legal frameworks. It's crucial to establish rules and penalize fraud, protect data, and hold banks accountable if something goes wrong. Without strong legal safeguards, trust in the system could be lost. The ACDT is advocating for a robust cybersecurity laws, such as mandating data encryption for Ghana card information and requiring banks to report any branches within 24 hours. Finally, there is the matter of awareness. Massive education campaigns are vital to ensure everyone understands and can benefit from this new system. So why does this matter? For starters, it could significantly boost financial inclusion because over 40% of Ghanaians don't currently use banks. With a Ghana card doubling as bank card, opening an account becomes simpler and it is a lot safer than current cash. For the economy, more banking means more formal financial activity, which can drive growth. Additionally, the system could reduce fraud since biometric verification makes it much harder to create fake accounts. Of course, challenges remain. Upgrading ATMs nationwide is expensive. Cyber attacks are a rare concern, and some people worry about the government having too much control over their data. But if these challenges are overcome, this initiative could redefine life in Ghana. Imagine a farmer in Tamale using her Ghana card to purchase seeds, pay bills, and save for school fees, all with a single multifunctional card. This is the vision of a digital Ghana. And that is all for today's episode. Please let us know your thoughts and suggestions on this in the comment section below. My name is Sheriff Haruna. Have a joyful life and see you in our next video, Macrao.